Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Now, if you're a regular on the channel, then you've certainly heard me talk about the importance of good polish, how polish is what separates a good game from a great game, all of those tiny animations, those sounds and flashes that make every action in the game feel really satisfying, it's all of those same things that make the players think, wow, this game is really high quality, even just while interacting with a simple main menu. One game with an excellent amount of polish is Valheim, just gathering basic resources in that game feels so satisfying. Another example is Hearthstone, placing down a card or doing some basic attacks just feels awesome. And more recently, Marvel Snap. Technically, it's a simple game with just some cards, but again, every action has tons of animation and effects to make it feel really powerful. So, since polish is so important, the question is when should you do it? Now, the first obvious answer is right at the end of the project. When the game is, say, 90% done and all of the mechanics and systems are implemented, then it's a great time to go and polish and add all kinds of tiny things to the game. This is another reason why I always encourage you not to just make games, but actually finish them as well. If you just jump from unfinished prototype to unfinished prototype, if you just do that non-stop, then you never take a project to completion and you never learn the super important part of how to make polish. That is a very important stage and learning that comes with experience. Learning what is polish or how to polish a game, all those tiny things, which one should you focus on? That is a skill like any other, and as with any skill, it's a skill that you gain with experience. I can say that my very first few games were definitely very unpolished, so when your game is close to finish, definitely make sure you spend some time doing nothing but polish, meaning don't add any more mechanics, whatever you have, just polish everything to perfection. So the first stage is at the end of the development, that is an obvious stage for when you should add polish, however there are some more cases where it also makes sense. And what gave me the idea for this video is because right now I'm actually going through one of those cases myself. Lately I've been working on polishing demo for my own game, Dinky Gardens. I published the demo last month and I've kept it up as I update it as I'm going through development. Now the game is still quite a bit far away from release, the launch date is meant to be just in October, so there's still quite a lot of core mechanics that need to be implemented before the final game is released. So with that in mind, you might question why am I now spending time doing some polish before all the mechanics are implemented. And the reason is because the demo is still live, people are playing the demo and either giving me their direct feedback or I can just look at the analytics to see what parts I need to improve. Feedback is a crucial part about how to make a great game, and if I want to get more feedback then basically I need to ensure that the demo for the game is as polished as can be, if people drop off in the first few minutes then I don't really get much feedback. So if I want to get more feedback, basically I need to make the demo better. And right now if I were to work on the missing mechanics that I still need to build, things like the interplanetary logistics system, if I work on those right now it won't really help me get more feedback. If people just quit in the very beginning of the demo then they will never reach those points. So that is why right now I'm spending some time, not a lot, just a little bit of time, just one to two weeks, spending that time just focusing on polishing the main menu and the very beginning of the game. I polished the buttons on the main menu, so instead of some boring static buttons, they now have some nice satisfying animations and sound when you mouse over and click on them. The buttons now also have some proper sprites and sound effects. For the single player menu, I also polished that. Instead of just instantly popping in, there is now a nice smooth fade to black, and then the single player window just comes up really nice with a nice animation. Again, all of these tiny, tiny things. These are small, but these are the kind of things that players notice, at least subconsciously, which leads them to enjoy the game for quite a bit more, which leads them to play longer. By the way, for handling all of these tiny things, I'm using the super useful asset called Feel. I made NASA review on it in a previous video. It's a really awesome asset for exactly this stage, for polish. It makes it really easy to add all of these tiny flashes and animations. Then I also polished the game itself. For the tutorial, previously it just had some boring text on the side, whereas now I have some proper tutorial videos and also made a proper UI for it. Also added some flashing images and a nice animation along with another sound effect. Again, small things, but you can see how it makes a huge difference. And then I also made some minor tweaks to the tutorial itself to make it more easy to follow. Like for example, the dinkies now stay still for one longer while they patrol an area where I want the player to start gathering resources. That way they never go far away and leads to a lot of confusion for the players. There's also a bunch more indicators on various tutorial stages, again making everything as easy to understand as possible. So my goal with this polish is really to help the players enjoy the game as much as possible and keep playing longer, which in turn will give me more data and more stats and more feedback to help me make the final game much better. So that is the other stage where it also makes sense to add some polish. If you have a public demo, like for example if you are participating in a Steam festival. At that point, even if there is still quite a lot of content that you need to build to make the final game, instead of working on those missing late game mechanics, it might be wise to spend some time just polishing the very beginning of the game in order to ensure you have a great demo, in order to get more feedback from your better players, in order to help you make the rest of the game better and better. Now the other stages where it also makes sense to polish are honestly really just variations of this same stage. Like for example if you're making a Kickstarter. Nowadays Kickstarter is really crowded, it is really difficult to get funding. Especially if the only thing you have is just a video. A lot of players really want to play your game before they decide that they want to fund the game. And again for this it is your best option to put your best foot forward. 
So even if only a sliver of the game is actually done, it is very wise to spend some time just polishing the part that exists instead of working on late game mechanics. If the players enjoy the Kickstarter demo, and adding some polish will help them enjoy it more. If they enjoy it, then the chances of getting funding go up massively. Another similar stage is when trying to get funding from a publisher. Nowadays, pretty much no publisher will fund you with just video or concept art. That is unless you already have a massive pedigree, if you have pre-existing contacts or an excellent complete game portfolio. If you don't have that, then it's really difficult to get funding without something playable. So once again, for this use case, take what you have and polish it to the maximum. Once again, doing that will greatly increase your odds of signing with a publisher and getting some funding. Yet another similar stage is when you have a slot on some kind of indie game convention, something like the indie mega booth. For these, you need to have a playable demo that players can actually play on the show floor. And once again, this is another scenario where players aren't really going to play your demo for 20 hours straight. They're not going to play the entire game, just the very beginning. So it doesn't matter that your late game mechanics aren't implemented yet. What matters is that the very beginning of the game is as excellent as can be. If they enjoy the beginning, they are going to go home and wishlist the game, which then increase your odds of finding success with the final game. So yep, if you're going to participate in some convention where your game is playable, then when preparing the build for that convention, make sure you take some time away from regular development in order to polish what you have to perfect that will increase player satisfaction, which will increase your odds of finding success in that convention. So hopefully this helps you see how there are more stages when you should polish your game rather than just at the very end. And speaking of polish, go ahead and try out the free demo for my game, which now has quite a bit of polish. I hope you'll like it and go ahead and add it to your wishlist. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.